Welcome, Senator, to Jock Docs, episode one, for real this time. Okay, my name is Alec Flynn, joined by my co-host, Andrew Collin. Today, we are talking about the seminal ESPN 30 for 30, which you can only get on ESPN+, Plus. not a big deal, uh, broke, in which we are seeing the lives of former professional athletes, NBA, NFL, MLB, uh, NHL, uh, you know, professional stock car racing, how quickly they go broke after they retire from the NFL. I mean, look, we know a lot of people that are probably going to be retired at the age of like 33 in the prime of their career, like Matt Reif. Um, uh, you know, why would they continue even do doing comedy? Should I look into the camera more? Yeah, maybe. All right. Well, Andrew's here finally, and um, he's about to actually contribute to the podcast, which is uh, good. Yeah, we, the, uh, we start this podcast every week by him being uh, unprepared. You think? I think so. Well, you know. <laughs> it happens, you know? I, I, I think... Uh, what do you think? These people that... They really think their career is going to last forever. <laughs> and I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Did this really hit home with you? Dude, this documentary hits me in all the feels. Mm-hmm. And I have... I've had I had another life before stand up where I made a shit ton of money when I had nothing. And you got to turn it on me. <laughs> I just did. I just okay. did. All right. There we go. No, I made a shit ton of money when I was 25 or 24. I had nothing in the bank. I was living at home and I went from $0 to actually actually being in debt 8 grand cuz uh, your boy had a minor um, heart attack from doing too much cocaine. Sick. In New Orleans. You're kind of like an athlete in your own way. My heart was racing. <laughs> yeah. I was... It, something was running. Uh, it wasn't my legs. And uh, <laughs> so I ended up having a minor heart attack, moved back to Florida, got my real estate license. And I did a deal, a land deal, and made $270,000. You made $270,000 $70, one way? One way. And someone looked at you and gave you that money? Uh... I don't know. They looked me in the eye. But it was, <laughs> dude, do you want to know? If- I mean, you at 25, you must have been the most reputable <laughs> young Bro, man in Florida. Dude, I we went to go get the bank loan, and I rocked the thickest fucking porn stash. Yeah. And my uncle was the guy that was buying it. He's big in real estate in Chicago. It's a whole long story, but he was not happy that I thought this was a joke. Like, I treated it like a joke, you know? He's like, oh. you're not a mustache guy. And he said that. And on the way Wait, home. Was he, he a mustache guy? No. <laughs> Mustaches were not. Then why? How could. Why, he was in no position to check you. I mean, he's about to pay $8 million for a property. He has. Oh, wait, wait. He was buying it from you. No, we. We set up the deal with six landowners. I'm going to sell keep, keep having growth. you talk about this so yeah. you can perjure yourself. Yeah, it's honestly. Probably would get me in trouble. <laughs> No, I'm back. I'm good on my taxes. So what now. we did was we killed a guy. Yeah, we killed a guy. We put him inside an orange grove and then <laughs> whatever. And next thing you know, we're driving a Range Rover. Instead of oranges, it just grew little heads of this other, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yeah, the guy looks pretty, yeah, it's a pretty cool guy. So, yeah. It's so, just different parts of him. He's a human tree. It's funny. My, my, your grandpa, my, my, grandpa, my uncle made me shave the mustache. And then we had a dinner with the... <laughs> With the bank later with the same no. lady, and then I had no mustache. So <laughs> Did she was, ask? No. I, but your boy brought it up. I shouldn't have. Did you? <laughs> That's how the mark, how easy the market was. I st- we still got the money. Wait, all right. Wait, uh, so like so. I'm I'm the lady, and you're at the dinner, and yeah. you just casually, what do you say? Uh, you know, is anything different about me? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, you sure? Good to see you again. Uh no, I think, look again. <laughs> think about it. Nothing? Uh, your mustache. Is your mustache gone? No. <laughs> Pluck my unibrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, my mustache was gone. And she's like, okay. We thought it'd be way funnier. And we just looked crazy. <laughs> and then they gave us an $8 million loan. We got that property under contract for like $14 million, And then the deal never closed. And Why not? Because the market crashed. Oh, wait, this was, oh, 2008. 2008. Oh, yeah, yeah you yeah. fucked up. So we lost everything. So I know exactly what th- is going on here. I mean, I blew all my money. You blew all your money. So, I, like, what were the biggest, in the documentary, like, they go through each segment of, like, the ways in which people blow their money. So 
It was anywhere from bad investments to helping out friends to divorces to um, medical bills to and then just like regular, you know, purchasing jewelry, cars, jewelry, cars, uh, houses, cryogenic chambers. Oh, uh, yeah. Blood boys. I mean, it's uh, I... Beanie Babies. There was one NFL player who actually ended up buying eight hundred thousand dollars worth of Beanie Babies. He had the entire Harry Potter set, the entire Lord of the Rings set. That player, Adam Pacman Jones. Man. Definitely got to watch this documentary, gang. It's Thong- funny a guy that fights everyone but has Beanie Baby. You know, it's like, it's Man, like dude, you wouldn't see. You, I love Adam. The Pacman Jones packs the largest dips known to man. He's always got a massive hog in. <laughs> He's got an absolute Manhattan project in his lip at all times. That dude was always fighting at strip clubs, just getting fucking after. <laughs> I love getting shit. Well, that's where we spent. We spent most of our money. I bought a truck, a Tundra. That nice. was like 50. Put some fucking big ass fucking rims on that yeah, bitch. Yeah, you Not trash. spinners, but trash. 20 inch trash. rims. Then I traded that in for a Mercedes like a month later because I was like, what am I doing? A Jew driving a truck. You know, it what didn't you, make sense to me. You couldn't even pretend? I tried. I was like, man, this is Toyota. It's not even American made. Hey, come on now. God damn. <laughs> God damn. So I traded yeah. it in for a Mercedes, and the Mercedes was seven grand more. So I went and I had to go get cash. I got it in cash, put it in a brown bag, and threw it at my buddy that owned a used car dealership. Drove so down. you were balling. For how long was this period of time? Like three months? Well, about a year, because I made another 80 Gs on another deal. So overall, I made about $340,000. Did you think you were the smartest man? Yeah. I thought not only that, I thought I had ten hundred billion dollars. When you get that check, they talk about it. When you get that first check and mm-hmm. you have no money, bro, you think you're the richest person on earth. Yeah. I, I would take out money and like show my receipt to my friend when we were hammered. Like, how's that feel? You know? Like shit like that. Just stupid shit. How does that feel? <laughs> I got fucking What a good friend. Bottle service, thousands of dollars, just gone. Fucking dude. And then I bought a condo for two twenty. And then it was worth eighty thousand or like sixty thousand dollars a year later. So I lost everything. Jesus Christ! So I know. Was this all in Miami? Uh, Vero Beach, Florida, which is about two hours north of Miami. Fuck yeah, dude! Yeah. So my business partner Rusty, I blame him for like everything. His name was Rusty, dude. Yeah, you should have probably seen that coming. He had a mohawk that he would <laughs> comb over. You have a porn stash. She has a mohawk, and everybody was like, "Trustworthy, bro." That's where Trustworthy. that's how good the market. That's a good one. <laughs> Bro. Yeah. <laughs> all you need now is a guy with one leg. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> you all we a, needed. And you had a firm real estate trust. <laughs> Dude, we had this little guy that... I don't know. You had a little guy? <laughs> that invested and he would sit in the truck and his feet would go straight out. No. <laughs> like they wouldn't even bend. And <laughs> no. and he, I, had a, I had a meeting with him. And, and I told Rusty, I go, we both can't be in the meeting because we're going to laugh in this guy's face because he's four foot three. Dog, you're telling... <laughs> and Rusty walked by and he, he, he's like, no, we're fucking, we're business guys. We're serious. I could be in a fucking meeting with this guy. He's the money guy. We go, and he, he walks by the office, looks inside, and he goes, no. no this is, <laughs> I'm not fucking going in there. Ah, <laughs> uh, dude. Anyhow. Dude, you, <laughs> you just took money from carnies. Is that what your thing was? No, no he was in a suit. He, had, he was real. He was a real boy. He was just small like a carny. I do like, I mean, I'm I'm not a tall guy, but anyone shorter than me, I definitely disregard them as being not serious. Yeah, anyone I could just pat on anyone the head. Anyone you could pat on the head. Because they always, the girls always say short king, so then I assume that I'm actually lord of the little people. That like anyone shorter than me, I'm kind of your king. Yes. You could physically dominate somebody. I'm going to try and wrestle a midget the next one I see. How many midgets do you think you can fight? At once? Yeah. Two. That's it? Yeah. Wow. You sell yourself short. I just don't want to lose. I mean, how embarrassing would it be if you lose? I feel like, though, if you fucking really fuck up the first one that comes at you, it sets a tone. Well, here's the thing. Your normal punching isn't... You're not punching straight away. You kind of have to get into... You have to get... You could kick. Yeah, I guess you could kick. I never really thought about it. Toss. Kick, knee, toss, roundhouse... You can't really choke them out because their necks are really big. Yeah, that's tough. Kind of how funny would it be? 
because how many times you see in the cartoons when they take when the bully takes two guys, picks them up by their shoulders, and then conks them together? Oh, a nice conk. <laughs> He's but conk it, on but the that, yeah, the problem is, is like if they get you on the ground, you're <laughs> fucked. If they get you, you know what I mean? Because they could each get a leg. I wouldn't want. I mean, also they're stronger than you think. Do you think uh, when the Minions movie came out, people just started calling little people Minions? For sure. <laughs> There's a couple Minions over there. I mean, there was literally a character called Mini-Me. Mini-Me. Yeah, yeah dude. dude. They didn't give a fuck. Banana. <laughs> <laughs> he died. Rest in peace. Vern Troyer. Yeah, man. Dude, I love this podcast because every day we come in for this pod, I am sweating profusely. Yeah. So. Should I put the AC on? Don't even put it on, dude. You fucking, God damn it. I don't know why I always lash out at you. I don't mean to. You do a good job on this podcast and I'm just, I get angry. I think you're just, yeah. I mean, driving here, traffic sucks. You I just have in. a lot going on, dude. That yeah? I just, yeah? What's wrong? I don't know, man. My apartment's really a mess right now. The Irish are like, I think, I don't know, dude. I live with a bunch of Irishmen, as you know. Yeah, you're living in kind of like a frat style. I it's mean, a you frat feel like you're style. You're getting too old for it. Living in a little room. Well, it's tough because <laughs> I'm living in a little. I'm a little room. I'm living in you're my a own short king in a little short in a little king room. in a little room. <laughs> I'm a little baby room, dude. I'm in a twin bed. Yeah. Do you know what it's like to have sharing sex in a twin? Sh- yeah. Dude. It's actually awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of rules. They kind of have to fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Because I have the bed raised up, so what you can do is just pretty much you take like they they have their half of their torso on that side, so you can stand. It's a standing situation, gotcha. which you don't really get with most regular queens. I don't know. I think anyone could find an edge of a bed, just because you're forced with an edge. You know what I mean? Ah, really? I thought that was pretty unique to my situation. <laughs> it's actually. <laughs> I mean, it's nice that you're looking for. The I positive. thought that was pretty yeah, stoked. Yeah, I was stoked on that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Don't even worry about it, dude. So you have this little bed. I'm not even mad. And a little room. Yeah. So you bring a girl home. You have you live with 18 little Irish men. (laughs) You literally (laughs) like live inside a tree. They're all named Drunky. Yeah. Drunky, pouty, really drunky. (laughs) Is that really what's like bothering you? Is like you don't have space. Like you don't have your. No, I think it's just like the, the apartment is just not clean, and I think that's also. They never want to turn the lights on. Like we don't have any natural light that comes into our apartment. So like, I'm always up in the morning and I want to just turn the lights on. Yeah. And then they go turn it off. What's wrong with light? Because of the money aspect, or they just I don't. Hate? Maybe I think they get sunburned. Is maybe, what my yeah. own. I think that's honestly what it is. Dude, the Irish get sunburned inside light. I think it's the LED. They're just like turn it off. <laughs> I'm gonna burn. I guess that is like their natural habitat is cloudy. Their natural habitat is very wet and cold. Yeah. It went on, you know, don't get me wrong. I love a good wet and cold, but at a certain point I need to feel like it's daytime. Bro, I lived like that for far too long in my life. Yeah. Like after I made money and lost everything, I had a bed on the floor until I was like 40. You know what I mean? That's fucking awesome, dude. I mean, it's something. I mean, could you imagine though? So like in this documentary, getting back to the documentary, shout out to Jock Docs. Yeah. Uh, We're doing it for real this time. Okay. Right, everyone that thinks it's not jock doc, it's this podcast sucks. Yeah, um, it's not good. No, probably fucking talked about myself too much up top. I mean, you have some pretty good stories, dude. I just really admire you for your stories and your adversity. I, I could have put them. Back what are these notes? Better. These all look like uh, notes that you have. All right, so go through the notes. Andrew's always got notes. Fucking pie charts. Uh, all right. This is the weird thing about this pod. Just or not this this doc. It's not a story, really, as opposed to, like, 45 different stories. So it's all over the place. Yeah. That being said, it starts off by telling you that NFL players in the first two years, 78% of them are broke. Uh, Two years after uh, retiring, excuse me, are broke. NBA, five years, 60% broke. God bless you. (gasps) I mean, that... That's me saying, damn. Damn. That's why sinus is going hot. Bro, darn. Think about it. Like, let's say, like, NFL, I think the average salary, you know, you think about these big guys, probably like 400 G's. And it was way less. I mean, in the, I, we go back to that, but like in the 70s, it was like they were making like 20,000 a year. It's crazy. But you cut that in half taxes, agent, you, yeah. manager. Could you imagine being like having to get a summer job as an NFL player? Where like, like as a lifeguard? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, Billy, what'd you do this winter? Nothing. I played for the Colts. Oh, that's sick. I was at college. Fucking loser. Yeah, you loser. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it. you know, 
it's all been within the last 20 years that yeah. these guys are making fucking bank. Hey, Billy, fill up the Slurpee machine. Dude. Uh, all right, boss. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. He still has his helmet I, I, on. I actually, I have to go and uh, I have to work out for my uh, for my team. Uh, your team is actually here at Chuck E. Cheese. So <laughs> I'm going to need you to put on the rat suit. <laughs> it's not the first helmet I've put on. Yeah, exactly. Please don't squish any more of the kids. You keep hunging them too hard. <laughs> Don't bring it. Don't bring the field in the Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, come on. Hey, Billy. Uh, a lot of the teenagers you work with say that you smell. And look, I don't really care. Listen, I'm not a fan of de- deodorant myself, but you know they're starting to talk about it. They're starting to you know make some burn books that they're leaving in the bathroom. They're they're, they're you know they're writing on the stall saying Billy smells. Billy's poopy. So uh, end of the day. I know you have training camp coming up. I'm going to have to let you go now, okay? And uh, I can't pay for the last two weeks, so. So um, how am I going to buy my cleats? Uh, I know. You put me in a tough spot here. Look, I don't want to be the bad guy, right? I feel like I'm being the bad guy. But you got to get the fuck out. Do you realize I just won a championship in front of 85,000 people who all love me and want my autograph, want a piece of me. Women are lining up to fuck me. And you're firing me from Chuck E. Cheese. I know. Hey, listen. That is the tough thing about this, where I really want to like you, but I feel like you didn't really gel with the team. You weren't really a good culture fit when you came in. So, hey, just like any team, uh, we need to cut some people. So, feels. I'm going to need the rat, ha- rat suit back. I'm going to need it back. The whole thing? The whole thing. Even the pants? <laughs> The legs, for the legs. <laughs> I was gonna use those for the for the game because <laughs> I can't afford pads. Yeah, I was gonna try my hand at hockey, dude. All they they were all drunk and fucking smoking rats, fucking That's enjoying life. When dude. men were men, ah, oh, dude, no fate, no fucking their helmet. I mean, it was just a different time. But I don't think people hit as hard and were as fast. So no, they didn't get as fucked up. And then they then they started getting some real money. They didn't have to work at Chuck E. Cheese no more. Some of them still did just uh, for you know the love of it. But dude, fucking. Uh, Steinbrenner bought the Yankees for $10 million. Yeah, I know. That's straight up nothing. $10 million. Matt, they're, Ru- they're, Matt Reif is going to make that this month. Yeah. One show. One show. Fucking God. I know why I keep them. bringing up Matt Reif. I'm yeah, just jealous. Because, yeah. It happens. He's Jealousy's so, okay. Hey, jealousy by the gin blossoms. Keep going. I'm letting us get derailed. This podcast fucking sucks. It's not good. Uh, Mark Cuban bought his team for $200 million. I'm just saying, like, and the Dodgers recently, you know, not even recently, sold for $2 billion. What so may, like, what, is it just the economy that's kept going up that has made these... Well, licensing. Didn't they, didn't they mention that, though? Yeah. They mentioned, like, the economy was just kept going up and up and, like, everything kept being great. And then that also coincided with the TV deals and the licensing, like you mentioned. Like, how much do they make in licensing for, like, the NFL, the NBA, for, like, one year? It's like a like six billion or something Something, yeah somewhere around there and uh the average salary in 77 in the nfl is 14.5 thousand dollars 1970 in the uh nba i mean it's just fucking insane what happened too is the the uh the internet boom the internet boom so then you had it you know guys making fucking they were talking about their first check. They're getting three hundred thirty-five thousand, five hundred thousand. A Rod just signed signed a ten-year, two hundred seventy-five million dollar deal. I mean, all it takes with these things too is one guy to get a fucking get a bag. Yeah, that's what they would call it. They call it getting a bag. Yeah, it sounds like cool. when you got your bag. Is that what you said? No, I said. Did you say that to your uncle? You said, "Yo, don't worry, Unc. I just got a bag, dude." <laughs> and Uncle is like, "Shave your mustache and fucking shave be your mustache, a Jewish boy, I'll kill you. and don't ever say bag again." <laughs> Fucking bitch. I'm going to bag you. <laughs> Ricky Henderson. I love that story. We got a Henderson. million dollar check. And then they did the accounting and they go, well, this million dollars hasn't been deposited. They go to Ricky. They go, we gave you this million dollars. What's happening? He goes, I framed it. <laughs> That's pretty good. I mean, look, you can't blame people. People don't have money. And what do they do when they don't have money? They don't know how to spend said money. Well, they'll, they'll spend it, but not very well. Like it's, uh, I feel like Charles Barkley, he says a lot in his interviews, like, uh, who was the guy, uh, Moses Malone showed him how to, wait, is that a, is that a boxer? Am I getting my own? No, Moses Malone basketball. Moses Malone showed him, he goes like, why do you have four cars? You can only drive one. 
You know, a lot of these guys don't get like the, the, the veterans to like come in and just show them, Hey, don't be a fucking idiot. Cause then they also become competitive. Like if you have like a young team, for example, and then the best player on your team is making all this money oh. and they are showing off, then you feel like you have to then show off. What was that called again? Keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah. Keeping up with the Joneses. And they, yeah, they had, you know, the, there's only a few guys on the team making that kind of fucking money. You have a lot of rookies too that gamble with these guys and they go and play poker games. And next thing you know, if they fucking lost their whole fucking signing bonus, you know, they just think they did because, you know, they're all, their ego is so fucking strong. Yeah. And that's what gotten them to the point they're at. So they think they could just muscle everything, but they find out that they fucking like all their business deals that they're like, Oh yeah. Oh, car washes like they, and then they invest in weird diamond fucking in Africa, like random fucking yeah, the shit. diamond mine in Africa. Well, dude, what was the investment? This actually, I think we should steal this idea. So one of the guys invested in a company or yeah. he had a guy come to him for a business idea where areas that are in high flood danger, yes. what you do is you put a plastic wrap around your furniture and then when water comes in, the wrap activates and turns into a bubble. And then all your furniture, when it floats away, you can still go get it and use it. Genius. I mean, so some of these people like that, you know, are, brilliant. are yeah. actually brilliant. Imagine yeah. saying that to your friend. <laughs> just going like, no, dude, everyone's been telling me to stop fucking taking business investments from you. And he goes, no, but. <laughs> I think what it is, black, Randy, please. black people a lot of times don't have the plastic they're like, look, the plastic's already on the living room couch that no one can sit on. Let's just make that inflatable. Like yes. it's hard. They're already happy. Well, that's there. also every Italian grandmother. Yeah. Every grandmother for some reason just kept the why is the plastic on? It's I mean, these people I mean, it's just tradition. And then tradition What's the no tradition? one questions it. Fucking throwing plastic over a fucking couch. Their parents did it. I'll do it. My kids will do, do it. Do your parents do it? No, my parents don't fucking do it. You said their parents did it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, but, like, who are they saving it for? Eventually to resell it. I guess when you're poor or, like, when money, like, a couch was an ins a very big investment. Yeah, that's a good day. point. Now they're free. Yeah, now you can just go on the fucking corner. Yeah. Well, but they probably got bed bugs, but it's all good. It's fucking. All um, what were you going to say, Andrew? I don't know, man. You always feel like, I feel like you're just so close on the precipice of something just really, something really brilliant. funny. And something brilliant. Yeah, and then and it falls short. Because I'm always telling you about these great business ideas. So, like, all right, say I'm your, I'm your friend. Okay? Yeah, I made it big. Okay. What's my, what I'm doing? I'm I'm the free solo guy. I'm the psychopath that uh, climbed the face of El Capitan without a harness. Okay. Okay. Now come to me. Pitch me a business idea. All right. All right so here we are. We're at a party. All right, and I'm talking. I'm like, hey, it's fucking easy. <laughs> That shit was easy. No, nah, dude, it's, I mean, look, I just want to say I'm not jealous of you. I'm not, I'm, I'm proud. proud of you. Yeah. Um, I, I Tell me I'm great. I I was going to get to there. Um, I'm the best rock climber ever. You're definitely top five for sure. Who's better than me? Alex Honnold. I'm at, I am Alex Honnold. Oh, I, <laughs> Shit. Cut. This sucks. Cut. This podcast sucks. <laughs> Dude, what are we doing? <laughs> Keep blowing it. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> We're trying too hard to get information. We're not out. trying. We're trying the perfect amount. I'm sorry. I feel like we keep yelling at each other, and I keep saying I'm sorry. What does this say? This is just a picture of a penis. Andrew just. Oh my God. Swastikas. Swastika. Okay, what about family and friends? You can't say no. I like that. <laughs> Maybe we just do a comedy podcast. No, where what we do you tell mean? Stories. This is the best podcast. This is such a good idea. Jock Docs. We're doing podcast about documentaries. Yeah. About sports. Yeah. Dude, this is the triple threat. It is. All right. Friends and family. We all have friends and family. <laughs> yeah, do we? You don't know until you have the fucking money. Very exclusionary. Yeah, everyone thinks like oh, I would do it differently. Everyone's like, oh, that won't happen to me. I would do it differently. Point. I got mustard on here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you would do it differently. I mean, like, 
what would you, I mean, cause you, could you just imagine telling all your friends and family, like, get the fuck out of here? Dude. Yeah. I guess the thing is the opposite of that is like having to deal with the conversation of saying no. It's easier to just give them the money because then you have to have the fucking conversation. Yeah. Like why you didn't give them the money. Yeah. But I think like, we'd be like, well, you're a drug dealer, so I can't. <laughs> there's an instant, like you got to buy your parents a house. If not, you're a horrible son. They're always, every, in the documentary, every athlete goes, gotta buy mom a house. Why does it have to be a fucking $500,000 house, mom? Yeah. You grew up in a fucking $10,000 It's a $500,000 house in Denver. We're from Mississippi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can't you just fucking get a... I don't know anybody here. I want to hang out in the game room. Maybe... But I always love skiing. <laughs> You've never skied. You've never skied. You've never skied. Just like yelling at your mom. Just like, why aren't you having fun in this new city? I don't know anybody... Indianapolis is the jewel of the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're ruining this for me. Yeah, I mean, what's the point of having a big house in a shitty city, you know? Anyhow, so you have to deal with fucking re- rejecting people and then having the annoying conversation. I think that you you could pick like maybe four or five immediate family. Anyone out of there, go fuck yourself. Okay. Who would you, I mean, wh- who are you going for? You got to go mom, dad. But then you also got to go, is this helping them giving them the money in a lump sum? You know, you're better off. If I had a brother, right? Let's say I made $100 million. Okay. And you were a fucking deadbeat fucking loser. Okay, you ready? Yeah, so we got, are we doing another role play? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Maybe this one will not suck. I think this one's going to be great. Okay. I made $100 million. I just signed my second uh, contract in the major leagues. Okay, what major league? Baseball. Oh, shit. Yeah, I play pretty good. Okay, Switch you're pretty hitter. good? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Uh, all right, Switch hitter. Nice. Yeah, I don't fucking work at Chuck E. Cheese no more. <laughs> that was a tough time for all of us. All right, so I made $100 million. Yeah. You saw it on the internet. You're my brother, but we're not that close. We're not that close. What happened to us? Um, you know, uh, you got into drugs okay. early. You didn't finish Say college. Less. Say less. Yeah. I got it. We got yeah. it. We got it. All right. All right, we're at, we're at the cookout. Yeah. Hey, what's up? What's Yo! Up? <laughs> hey, what's up, man? See you, man. All right. Dude, me and my boys went to your uh, went to your game. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I got you the tickets. Yeah. You actually, asked me we, for fucking 25 of them. Yeah, we didn't actually go to... The, we ended up at the bar next to the stadium. But, oh, cool. So yeah, what did you do with the like, tickets? Uh, you scalped them? You scalped them, didn't you? No, dude. See, that's what... You know, this is... I'm, I didn't scalp anything. You want to talk about a scalp? I'll take that scalp off your fucking head. I'm kidding, dude. I'm actually kidding. Wow. I and I play for the Cleveland Indians. You're going <laughs> to fucking say that? I'm literally kidding, dude. I'm actually joking with you. All right. So, Funny. Um, actually, yeah. I wanted to have this meeting here um, at the cookout specifically because I have this idea. Okay. let's. Can we get away from everyone? If you want to talk to me, let's go inside. Why can't, why can't I say everything when I want in front of the dog? Well, it's not just the dog. It's mom, dad, grandma, grandpa. Yeah, they're on my side. They're all on my... my Are you sad because you've distanced yourself with your highfalutin, high-luxury lifestyle that now you feel like you're not connected to us? I feel like... Because that's what... Your version of this and how you see it is uh, extremely selfish. And I think that you aren't living in reality. Mm, mm-hmm. And yeah. And I think that this you is, uh, what we want call, a free handout. Yeah, okay. This and is, you don't work for it. Good, good, good. So, actually, I've been going to therapy, and this is what you do, which is a classic thing called victim blaming. Okay? Who pays for your therapy? Um, Mom? I, I, it's Look, a, ser- I'm pr- it's a actually, service. Can I take that back? And say, I'm proud of you for going to get help. But Thank it you. doesn't seem like your therapist is leading you it seems like he's just figuring out ways for you to argue to get your point across to gaslight well it's not even like he's not well it's not like a traditional therapist it's that guy the therapy gecko that you call into and he he wears a gecko suit Mm -hmm. and uh, then he answers your questions okay so So he's answered like two of mine so what do you say he's just he's so can i get to i my main point was that i have an idea that i think you would like to hear about here we go again okay i'm sorry Come on. i'll hear i'll listen you never i know i'm being negative give me, give me i'm being shot. negative Let so me. here's the idea all right you know how they have t-shirt cannons at some of your games you ever heard of t-shirt cannon uh, yes okay of course what if uh-huh. instead of a t-shirt cannon it's an ar-15 
Mm-hmm. I'm listening. For some reason, I kind of... And it shoots out your, Skittles. This isn't your worst as fast as a bullet? As fast as a bullet. This isn't your worst and, idea. And, and you know what it is? Mm-hmm. The mascot, because they don't like the other team's fans. They just go right into the opposing fan section, and they shoot them with Skittles. So you're looking at a mass shooting with Skittles that will pierce skin because they're going as fast as a bullet. But you're killing the. I shouldn't have even brought it up to you. I shouldn't have even brought. No, it up. No, no, I'm. No, I'm, I feel I'm, like I'm I shouldn't just, have brought it up I am, because I am. You weren't really open to the idea in the beginning. That's just one of my many ideas. I have so many ideas. I'm full of ideas. Like, okay, mom and I talk about this all the time. Okay? Yeah, wait, wait, like wait. I just need to like figure out which which one of my passions would be the best one. All for right, me pitch to go another. Down to. Pitch. A, I'll listen. Okay. I'm listening. I'm. I think I'm being pretty open for what happens okay. in the past. Slip and slides. Okay. Okay, slip and slice. You know how they're never slippery? Well, they're never like slippery enough? Okay. Okay. Slip and slide included base level industrial lube. Okay? Mm-hmm. Destigmatize the lube industry. How many different applications can we use regular lube for? Okay? Helping with your skin. Slip and slides. Maybe uh, you want to shine up that bald head of yours. I'm not bald. I'm just wearing a baseball cap. First of all. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I know you're not. Cut. All right. <laughs> no, I have more to say I about this. I feel like I, <laughs> I wasn't going after you. Uh, <laughs> who are you going after? The I character? don't know. The character. That's a good point. I think the Lou would be too slippery, and you're going to cause a lot of broken collarbones. But... I like where your brain's at. And I think if guided correctly, your creativity is great. You mean that? The problem is your follow through. Okay. You've never finished anything in okay. your life. And um, I know I'm. you were a great baseball player, right? What happened in eighth grade? I yeah. Say, I had sex with the coach. Yeah. I had, mm-hmm. with, I had sex with the coach. Yeah. And whose fault was that? I mean... Mine. Yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't have done that. Well, it just started a butterfly effect. You sucked his dick, and then next thing you know, you fucking batted 147. Because <laughs> you can't swing a bat with a dick in your mouth, can you? I'm full of cum, <laughs> and I'm not having fun. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> This is so fucking stupid. What happened to us? Are we retarded? I think we are. I don't know. Oh, this is great. I think Stories we're weren't crushing it. Then this, going through the dock was a mess. <laughs> Dude. Because this, well, this dock's do- all over the place. This dock, I'm going to be tough. honest with you. It's a tough one. It's a tough dock. <laughs> it wasn't that good. I remember just, I think like watching it to the, if you haven't seen the documentary, mm. you just watch it the first time through and you're like, all right, well, this is interesting. The second time through, you're like, I get it. Yeah, I understand. People go broke. I think just the idea that people are growing, going broke is like very shocking to you. Um, but like, it's just so slow and monotonous of everyone just saying the same thing. Like, I had nine cars. I had three houses. Lost yeah. it all. I will say this. There are a lot of people that you have to kind of like look at their demeanor when they're talking about a lot of this, where... You'll have one guy like Andre Risen who is in there going, hey, man, I told him I ain't never going to be that guy serving burgers at McDonald's. I'm shining and I still ain't. Up. And yeah. I still ain't. But you are. But, yeah. But you were. You might be. <laughs> I felt like. And then you had some dudes that got, like, arrested because they were homeless for a few years. And, and they were crack. just like, yeah. man, it goes quickly. It goes. And then it don't, it don't come back. I felt like. It don't come back. The people that were these egomaniacs were in a way bragging about their past of like one up one up in each other on what they did buy like it was it's still in them to compete yeah and i felt like they were still doing it in this dock like yeah, uh, like I how fuck, bad they fucked up yeah how bad you fuck up there is a whole thing with that like i i i told my story it feels kind of fun to, one, just get it off your chest, realize it's not that big of a deal. 
but also it's like you feel cool. Like it feels cool to be like, yeah, I had fucking forty five wives and came in all ninety of them, and I had seventeen babies with huge cocks. <laughs> you know, what was that guy Leon Cersei? He's like, I took. He said I took the wife and the I took the girlfriend and her family to Jamaica with a million dollars. Yeah, came I, home. Came home. Grand. She only had four hundred grand in the bag. And she goes, oh yeah, we got into a fight, so I took out my half. Not even half. A little bit more. A little bit more, <laughs> dude. A trifling. These they, just they, be oh, what about the baller alert? Oh, balleralert.com. Do you think they have anything like that for like comedians? I mean, there's chuckle fuckers. They just go to your show. I mean, it's the nah, same yeah. thing. I mean, we're definitely not ballers. No, well, some comedian. Like who? <laughs> I thought you would say the name. <laughs> I'm trying not to. I know. <laughs> Which felt even worse. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're blowing it on this one but i don't even care i know this is not good i think we're having fun though as long yeah. as we're having fun i had a blast or i'm having what time is it how much time do we have left so these girls would get texts to go <laughs> michael <laughs> jordan a power through <laughs> <Michael> not <laughs> acknowledge michael jordan had, there were seven thousand women <laughs> <laughs> this is a disaster. We're smart people. We're smart. We're funny guys. We're funny We're dudes. We're smart guys. We came together because this was a good idea for a podcast. I still think it is a good idea. It's just every fucking time we try and do this, it just blows up in my fucking face. I just feel like we're not finding our rhythm. I think we're all, our rhythm's off. What's that meme, the Vince Vaughn meme, where he's like, I don't want, hey, look, not time to be pointing fingers here. You're a problem. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big, big problem. I like this one. The the uh, their advisors stole the money. I like that because they trust them because they wear a suit. You know, you yeah. Get a lot of the advisors suit that happens a lot, dude. I mean, Everything. a lot of agents and shit like that steal money. You trust and, your and doctor you when he's wearing scrubs. Like they all trick us. We're all dumb. You trust your rabbi. You trust your rabbi. You trust the guy making your Burger King burger. Anyone in a costume, really? I'll I'll be like, well, those aren't normal pants. Yeah, I, I guess, guess I guess I have to. I guess you're a firefighter. <laughs> I guess you're a firefighter. <laughs> Should we become firefighters, man? I was thinking about this. I mean, the way this podcast is going, I, I couldn't apply quicker. I don't know. I might be too old, though. I think you could be a firefighter. Because that was what I was going to do if I wasn't going to do comedy. No, dude. Now we're talking. Yeah. Now, what was a 9-11? <laughs> yeah. I felt bad for what I'd done. <laughs> yeah. For what your uncle did? For what? Your uncle Ben Laden? Uncle Benny? <laughs> Benny Lodge. <laughs> John Daly Lodge. lost fifty million dollars <laughs> gambling. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is to just keep going back to the facts. <laughs> MTV Cribs. <laughs> That's it. That's Internet boom. Man, that this. is. I mean, you could probably trick me though in the two thousands with being like, "Hey, this is uh, boobs dot org. This is going to be huge." <laughs> oh. Dude, I, I tried to do a website called youhot.com. I spent <laughs> no way, fucking way, way, yeah, no. yeah. I was like, it was called you hot, and it was gonna be like hot or not though for video, and I wasn't way off. <laughs> no, no, this wait, was what? before, yeah. Hot or not was a website where you put your pit photos. I'm up. familiar like, with hot yeah. or not. So I was like, what? What if girls would want to fucking just put up themselves in bikinis, but in video form, and then meet people, and that's what fucking Instagram and TikTok is. I was ahead of the curve. This is like after YouTube, but. <laughs> and so i fucking spent a lot of time on this thing and money you hot.com i mean were you like someone petitioning ended up, girls at the bar be like i have this website that i think you'd be great for you would think but the only video was me on an incline uh or uh back <laughs> machine with peanut butter all over me singing alicia keys and that's the video i thought was gonna really launch <laughs> No one, no one. It was me in the garage. Real creepy video. <laughs> you thought you're like this will spurn everybody yeah. into action. This is my call to action yeah. to the hot ladies of the internet. With me with peanut butter on my chest, <laughs> going, "Yo, it's like, get on my ass, master!" I swear to God. And so then, obviously, <laughs> it didn't blow up like I thought it would. And uh, how do you even share a website back? You just like. <laughs> You can't even send a link. You're just like, you have to go onto the home desktop and be yeah. like, I have to type in youhot.com. I know. It was not smart. <laughs> I thought it was going to, but I don't think I was way off in the idea <sighs> of it, of just people wanting to be seen as hot. And that's it in video. That wasn't really being done on YouTube where like it was, that's what it was all about. You know what I mean? Anyhow. 
Uhot.com. Someone bought it. Some some guy bought it. How much did you buy it some for? Some company for like eight Gs. He bought the uh, dude. You've been the making domain. deals. Yeah, he bought the domain. This is this hasn't even been like about broke the dog. This has been about you, the deal maker. Who then went the broke. shark? <laughs> so I sell it for eight Gs. Next day he makes it a porn site, but I didn't tell anyone. So anyone that went to the site <laughs> thought I was just like, you know what? You're porn. a porn guy. <laughs> and I had so many people write me. They're like, dude. Finally, <laughs> like, like they weren't even like great website. Yeah, dude. Finally, you Been fucking waiting. Yeah. Can I get a membership? No one cared. I learned a lesson that day, though. What was your lesson? That like, if I got into porn and was successful, no one would give, no one would think of me. I mean, especially not now, especially now yeah. you'd be heralded as a, as a free love hero. That's true. I mean, think about how many porn stars are just, but here's the thing. It's only, is it only lady porn stars? Are like guy porn stars like I mean Johnny Sins of course is what's seen as his heroes? Yeah. Yeah. I mean guys, you know. It seems like an industry though that's still run on like just drugs and taking advantage of people. It's definitely like still very dark industry. I mean it's uh I don't uh, there's no one that sticks in it a long time usually. Have you looked up uhot.com lately? No, we can look it up now. Yeah, let's you want see. me to use my phone? Yeah, let's see what it is. All right, we're going on uhot.net. Last time it wasn't a domain anymore. It used to be like Pornhub and RedTube. They tried to make it like that. Uhot.com. Yeah, what oh. is it now? So it's not a bad name, um, actually. It's actually a website for climate change relief. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uhot? Call this number. <laughs> It just says not secure. This is all I got. Oh, fuck. Yeah. So whoever spent that eight Gs fucking didn't really. Didn't keep up with it. Just says like, I think my phone is telling me like, please do not try and go further into this website or else you will die. Yeah, u was not my, I tried to make an app too. That didn't work out. Called Erlacker. Oh, here, u health, fitness, and lifestyle. Oh, you spelled it. I thought it was Y. I thought it was U H. No, no. Oh, I thought you were way cooler than that. No, it was like YouTube, but for hot. Fucking brilliant. Okay, this is the part of the podcast. All right, are we done? Is no, it over? No, we're not. How even, much more time? Have we have? started. We haven't we, even started. I think we're gonna have to do this all over again. You think so? I don't know. I think we could take bits and pieces of this and make it great. I can cut it up at the house. I don't know. It's a train wreck. This is a tra- this is what a train wreck is. This was a train Why wreck. Why did this go so bad? I think we're both it's midday. We're doing these things at this is 1 p.m. Our brain isn't funny. I think I'm pretty I'm feeling pretty Maybe good. Maybe I'm not feeling. I think you've been great. We've been great. Yeah. I just think the riffing could have been better. That's all right. Yeah. I love that we give a play by play of a sports podcast like we're so how do you think the pod went? <laughs> you think this pod went? We have direct reactions to our own podcast as we're doing it. Bernie Kozar was very sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> the entire documentary he was, dude. Bro. Dude, he looked like an actual meatball sub. He made a lot of money in real estate. I remember when I was doing real estate. Oh, he was in, he was a big shark? Yeah, for a little while. It was like Bernie Kozar. He like partnered up with the like the owner of the Dolphins. They Is he from Florida? Is he from Ohio? I think he's from Ohio originally, but he was playing with the, or he ended up in Miami. He was with the U. Yeah, with the U. Dude, I mean, yeah, Bernie was. He kept on, dude. Bernie was another one of those guys that just kept going. You know, you find out that uh, the people that marry you don't actually love you. Dude, and his then story you have, was sad. His was very his sad. His dad, he's like, I used to get my dad beers, and he would hit me if I didn't buy him if I didn't get him beers. And so later in life, I thought if I gave him money, he'd finally be happy with me. And would stop hitting me emotionally, and sure enough, he just took all his money and yeah, fucking, it's sad. Yeah, and bought beer. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, million dollars! I could buy so many beers with this. Yeah. Someone had you, said your had, dad is just stuck in fifteen-year-old brain. <laughs> yeah, so I had a line. He goes, "You know, my wife took all my money, and it was actually finally a good thing because people stopped calling me for money." Yeah, that was actually <sighs> yeah. Geez, he was like, finally, I could be alone with my thoughts. Oh, my demons. Holyfield, his fucking house, 52,000 square feet. For no reason. I think Mike Tyson bit his ear and then was like, he, mm, got, he got some kind of like spending disease. <laughs> well, Mike Holyfield Tyson had a tiger was... that got 
got away and mauled a guy and, and then got sued. They got sued for it. <laughs> that was sick. <laughs> you know what? This story would have been better if they just picked four dudes and yeah, like, followed their, their story followed their, from childhood. There were also no sports highlights, which pisses me off. As you know, when I'm grading these, I like a good, slowed down, yeah. highly edited sports highlight. None of them were in there. It was just a lot of still photos of people at the club or a bottle of Cristal or like sneakers and shit and cars. I was like, I don't, who cares? I get it. Yeah. All right. I know what a Ferrari looks like. And so for that reason, for a few reasons, I'm giving this, I think this documentary was freshman. I give it a, it's freshman team. I do like the guy that bought, got the Ferrari as a signing bonus and couldn't drive stick. <laughs> so it just sat there in his one car garage. Andre Risen? It wasn't Risen. That one wasn't Risen. Oh, I think yeah, that yeah. was uh, maybe Mashburn. Yeah, I think it was Mashburn. Fila. Anyhow, uh, I, I I enjoyed the doc. I just think as a uh, podcast about talking about docs, it did not do justice because there's no story. The story is just a bunch of anecdotes. Yeah. And so, it doesn't, there's no heart to it. You don't really understand who the character is. And for that reason, JV. JV, damn. Do you only go JV in varsity? Or do you go, you also subscribe to the freshman team? I'm not that? afraid of a freshman team, but I, I, I still enjoyed this doc. I just, it's, I think, I thought I enjoyed it more when I used to watch it. Like when I watched yeah, it the right? first time. Yeah, right? I was the same way. And then I revisited this and I'm like, I don't like it. You know what we're going to watch next? Actually, for those of you at home who are listening along, we're going to be watching the David Beckham documentary in all four parts. It's coming out one part each week. Why? Because he's the most handsome man we've ever seen. And on this podcast, we reward people who are naturally gifted in the face and body. Okay. So that's the end of uh, Jock Talks podcast. Another futile, a futile attempt at <laughs> making saying that word. <laughs> At making a sports documentary podcast. Dude, this is bad. This sucks, dude. We suck. Uh, October 19th, uh, you can see me at Portland Helium. October 19th, you can see me in fucking at the Riot Theater in Houston. Come to my fucking show. Don't go to Andrew's. I don't know about it. Don't go to his. Don't go. I've seen his stuff. It's I'm hilarious. Andrew is very bad. Not. I don't know, but... Just fucking subscribe, okay? Please, for the love of God, just please subscribe. Leave a nice uh, five-star review. And uh, if you want to leave a comment, make something really mean. That would be pretty funny. We'll post it. We'll, we'll talk about it on the pod. Um, you know where to find us. It's on Spotify. And yeah, that's it. I think next time we'll, be, we'll, we'll do better YouTube. with, with it's this YouTube podcast. Too. It's also on YouTube. It's mostly on YouTube. So, man. We kind of, we chunked it, didn't we? It's not good. All right, whatever. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.